Hello and welcome to Bad Boy Cinema. I am your host, Rick Reel, and with me is, as always, and no one else, uh, my co-host, Elliot Film. Hello. How's it going? Uh, it's going in the direction that it needs to. Okay. Forward in time. It's the only, the only direction time uh, goes. Hmm. Mm think about it maybe that's not true uh well anyways this, uh, this let's, just, let's just get right into it let's just get right into it man let's get right into it we got it with What's this the week deal with the ginger ale car <laughs> no we're not we're done we're, we've put willy wonka to bed we're not talking yeah, about that true. anymore so true that's we're definitely true. not going to start talking about it again in 20 minutes um well, this week uh we Took a look at National Treasure, uh, released in 2004, directed by John T, starring Nick Johnny. Cage, Harvey Keitel. I guess it's having his name on the, as on like the a starring, starring as a second yeah. above <laughs> Scene Beam, which is a fake name. Yeah. Um, or or Diane Kruger, which again, I mean, not who's John Vaught? Oh, he was the dad, and then uh, yeah. Justin Lee Bartha. Voight, is it? I said John Vaughn. I said Vaught. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's uh, yeah, John Voight. That's no, uh, you should have said it the my way. That's I Angie said it. Jolie's father. Oh, he's also Mr. She's, a, she's a nepo. Holt. She's a nepo baby, then. Yeah, they're like, "Oh, your dad was a national treasure." All right, you all right, we're gonna do Mister and Mrs. Smith. <laughs> and um, they were right to do that because uh, that movie had really probably true. more chemistry in it than the National Treasure did. Yeah, absolutely. in my opinion. Yeah. Uh, but I guess I don't know. Do we want to? go through kind of how we did it last week with uh with Willy Wonka and just sort of go point by point or did you have did you have like strong opinions um because I don't think you did have strong opinions on no Nash treasure it's fine it does certainly exists yeah There's, I, I believe uh, I believe when I when I was watching it I I messaged you in our private chat that uh which is not a DM we don't yeah. we don't do DMs. We just have a private like <laughs> sub channel in the Discord that's like just for just yeah. for movies. So um, we could invite other people to, it, but we won't. We don't. We won't. It's we just could. us. Um, unless we had a, a third co-host. Hmm. What a what an idea that would be. That yeah, would be a novel a novel idea to have a third mic on this show. We definitely need it. Um. <laughs> Uh, yeah, but I was like, man, this movie feels like an Uncharted game, <laughs> which yeah, obviously the Uncharted true. games came out after this movie. Uh, but you know, me saying that was kind of a disservice to like both, you know what I mean? Yeah. I, I was, I was being, cause I don't know, like Uncharted games are like kind of stupid and this movie is also like pretty pretty i don't know it does it try to be smart would you say it tries to be smart like i don't um kind of yeah it's weird i don't know i i think um it's like a dumb guy's idea of what like smart people are like i don't even think it's that like that's um that's a big staple of stephen moffat who like this is a dumb guy's idea of a smart person is he Um, was he uh sherlock Mm-hmm. He's okay. Sherlock and Doctor, Doctor Who. Who. Yeah, I've, I've watched a video essay. Yeah, <laughs> I've watched um, each bomber guy. Okay, I think. Yeah, I. I, uh, I mean, like you can't as a as a YouTube video, but I walked out of that video essay. Uh, <laughs> I don't think I finished it either. Uh, yeah, um, yeah. So that's like, you know, that's a dumb guy's idea of a smart person. 
this is just like what if um like what if we just threw in a bunch of trivia as is this like a neurotypicals idea of an autistic person yeah probably maybe that's a better way of yeah they're like what if um what if one guy was really autistic about history um and then he had a friend who was like only kind of autistic about history and he's like really impressed no like are you are you talking about riley being the friend yeah or the girl (laughs) the girl um i don't know she's kind of nothing in this movie she is she doesn't need to be in the movie other than like she she doesn't need to be in the movie longer than like when they steal the declaration of independence like she could drop out at any point yeah i feel like scene bean could have just killed her and that scene bean could have killed her um so like I guess the, the, movie, the movie opens up right where they're going to that frozen, there like there's like a ship in a glacier or mm-hmm. something. The Charlotte, and and scene being the villain is you know I guess you know antagonist maybe more. I mean, he didn't seem like I mean, that big of an is, asshole until the the plot like made him be an asshole. You know what I mean? Um, like I his, mean, his henchmen were bad, but he was just like I just like you know I just want the fucking. Yeah, there's henchmen. <laughs> you can't absolve it it's like oh it's the henchman doing all the hard work he's not absolved um in the charlotte he's you know threatening to kill nick cage and his friend he's well, just but nick cage was also down. being really annoying about stuff like i would have been like you know like let's he's saying get let's, on not, with it. let's not steal the declaration of independence but then um, he goes and steals it anyway like admittedly yeah. his hand was forced but still like you know I do yeah. think it's funny where he, people remember this movie and it's the line of him saying, I'm going to steal the declaration of independence. But in the beginning of the movie, you might not remember this folks at home who haven't seen this in a while. He's staunchly against stealing the declaration of independence. Yeah, He very much does not want to. Um, yeah. And that's, you know, you know. Which is right. You shouldn't steal the declaration you shouldn't steal anything it also seems way too easy it's from a corporation folks um yeah like that it could have been a heist movie it could have been just stealing the declaration of independence but and that might have been a better yeah that might have been like if you just follow um sean bond's character and how he figures out to steal the declaration of independence yeah and then when you get there, you know, an hour into the movie, I guess 45 minutes into the movie, you actually get to the the preservation room and Nick Cage is there already with it. You're like, damn, dude, what a twist. Uh, I, I think I think scene Bean would have been it would have Sean been Vaughn. Uh, Sean Vaughn. <laughs> tomato I'm tomato. Bon. I'm going Sean Bond. All right, I'll stick with scene Bean, though, and then. That's fair. Maybe, well, maybe we can meet in the middle. Uh, maybe some listeners probably just like hanging <laughs> right now, <Yeah>. you know. <laughs> uh, they're hanging out, listening to this lovely show. Um, but you yeah, know, I, I would have loved like a prequel film of this where it's like Nick and Scene Bean working together before mm-hmm. Scene Bean. Like, because clearly they, they've mm-hmm. worked together before, right? Yeah, they're like best friends. Yeah, they're like they're like pals, and like you know, they're just annoyed that like Nick brought Riley in on it. Which yeah. I mean, to be fair, Riley kind of sucks. So yeah, this is um, with Justin Bartha, Riley. Yeah. Um, according to Wikipedia, he is a sardonic computer expert. Sardonic is a computers, strong word. I don't know if computers exist in this movie, right? No, they. I mean, they do. He he. Uh, I guess he does a wire the, to the the thing, and otherwise he he's like good laser. at Google. Yeah, he is good. At, he does the laser, and then he has like a surveillance van. I guess they kind of gloss over that. He doesn't like. He, goes, he exists to just like, and what's so weird about him is like he's smart. And yet he almost always seems like the dumbest guy in any room. 
Yeah. Like he's coded as like, I'm the smart, annoying, nerdy guy, but like, you know, I'm here because I'm helpful, but he doesn't really do much other than there's like one scene where he knows about daylight savings. Yeah. Which sucks. Which I, I, yeah. He's, he, he's annoying and largely unlikable through the whole movie. Um, Looking back on it now, it really feels like they added Riley um to make fun of somebody in the writer's room who was just like um actually guys you forget about daylight savings and they're like okay let's just make that a guy um yeah i don't like i don't like that he exists i mean i feel like him and um uh what's what's the because her name's diane kruger right what's her character's Mm -hmm. name um, I fuck, you know, I fucking forget. Abigail Chase. Abigail Chase. Doc, Dr. Chase. Both Riley and Dr. Abigail Chase. Um, Ooh, her her name's Dr. Chase, and she's getting chased the whole movie. <laughs> oh, dude. Oh, man. Uh, but they both feel like they're, they only exist because someone was like, we have to follow the template of big movie. So we yeah. have to put the, they, these characters have to be here, even though you could really just watch like Nick Cage just do all this by himself, and it would have been yeah, solid, would have been fine. Um, get rid of get rid of scene beans henchmen, you know, just have just two guys just kind of do a prestige basically, mm-hmm. but yeah. it's stealing historical artifacts instead of magic. Yeah. You know? you, and then you find out at the end there's just a machine printing the Declaration of Independence over and over again, and he <laughs> burns it. <laughs> and Spoilers there's two for the cages. prestige. <laughs> um, yeah, there should be more movies with two Nick Cages. That's my uh, that's my hot take. They're good. Co- they're yeah. Nick Cage is great. By the way, just in case anyone is curious uh, out there listening, um, Nick Cage's name in this film is Benjamin Franklin Gates, which um, we wanted to call attention to. Yeah, when we were reading Wikipedia before we uh, record the episode, it was... Because uh, I don't think they mentioned the middle name thing. No. I mean, you I mean, can assume... If they did, assume, I wasn't paying that close attention, but... I think you can assume, but... Uh, yeah, I don't think they say it. Um, and it's also interesting that in the very beginning, mm-hmm. um, you're seeing baby Nick Cage. Yeah. How old is he? Freaking seven? Oh. May, I don't know. <laughs> he's definitely he seems older. a little older than seven. I was going to say. Yeah. I think, I'm very I think bad. He's like 12. It. Very bad. He's probably 12. Um, his dad, who is just John Voight wearing a bad wig, uh, already. I thought that it was his grandfather. His grandfather is telling him the story, but his dad comes in, John Voight. Oh, uh, like, I didn't even. I didn't. Pressure's I didn't, not real, you guys. Freaking idiot! Get out of my son's life. Um. <laughs> so, like, already he's he's out of the treasure hunting game. Yeah. Why would he name his son Benjamin Franklin? <laughs> he just loves, he, you know. Well, what's because we looked at the director John T's work, which is all over the place in terms of, you know, kind of a, a big. Yeah, I called it nothing. a who's who of what's that. Yeah. Um, and it, it's all. Um, I would describe the movies that he does as like Wyoming um, where it's the state that you're like, it's the least interesting state. And like, that's why you remember Wyoming always. Yeah. You're never going to forget Wyoming because it's the most forgettable. Um, And that's John T's filmography. I mean, national treasure might be the best movie that he's made. Oh, oh, absolutely. (laughs) Which is not, (laughs) it's crazy that somebody like that can you can just have a career making i mean theoretically you know my movies that have a good return right yeah i mean national treasure 100 mil got three 
almost 350 at the box office. Like that's pretty. Mm-hmm. pretty National good Treasure Two did way better, also. Really. Mm-hmm. I hear National Treasure Two might even be better than the first one. It might rip, but uh, I would never watch the sequel before reviewing the first one. Is it? It kind of colors your um, your ideas. You know, you got too much context. You yeah. can't be reviewing one thing with the context of a second thing. That's true. I, I agree with that, actually. Yeah. Which is why, which is how we did it with Kung Fu Panda. Absolutely we true. Wa- we watched all three movies and then, then we watched the fourth movie in order. We didn't want to, re- you know, that way. Yeah. Because we, we are honest on this show, on this, on this program. Absolutely true. And if we ever go back on this stance, it's because we forgot. <laughs> It's not intentional. We just don't listen to ourselves. Yeah, we don't really remember what we are recording. Yeah, by the time it, it's released. Yeah, by the time it's released, I have no idea. It's like I can re-listen to the podcast because it's this is new content as far as I'm <laughs> concerned. Because for the folks at home, like we record these like three to four weeks before they're posted. Yeah. So where there's like a, a significant lag, which is why we typically don't do the, you know, more topical movies. And if we do do a topical movie, we have to move everything around, and it's a whole, it's a whole thing. Yeah, and I'm uh, I'm not down with that, honestly. That's why I hate topical movies. Um. Yeah, I feel like uh, I don't know about you, Rick, but my life. Um, if my life was a movie, people would be complaining about plot holes all the time. They're like, wait a minute. <laughs> Didn't you say that you hate that movie, but you're watching it again? Like, I don't know. I don't have convictions about anything. <laughs> uh, well, I'm very strongly opinionated. Uh, so I typically, I typically don't. I have, I have so many uh, opinions that I don't care about and will go back on. Oh, I will die on pretty much any hill, you know. Yeah, if you catch me in the right mood, I'll I'll fight about yeah. anything. Um, your uh, your second cousin, Celine Dion. Um, I don't know what this bit is. I was trying to do a, a hill to die on. Is yeah. is your um, your birth name or something? I don't know what I'm talking about, folks. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, anyways, uh, what would you think of Nick's performance in this film? Which I, I think it was probably uh, the highlight of maybe the film. Um, yeah, I mean, but not Cage necessarily the best Nick existing. showing. Yeah, because he was doing um, some weird Nick Cage stuff. There would be little, mo- like he'd be pretty normal, and then occasionally he would like. I don't know if it was, you know something he chose to do and he like kind of sprinkles in a little little wacky nick cage spice and in, into a into a line here or there or if you know they did a bunch of takes and the director our our friend john t was like mm-hmm. you need to be a little weirder for this one uh we have my, a quote that it hit yeah my um head canon about nick cage films is he's always trying to do um like snake eyes I don't know if you've seen Snake Eyes. I have not seen Snake Eyes. Uh, I recently watched Snake Eyes. He's over the top. He's hooting and hollering. He's having a great time. Um, I feel like he's always trying to do that. And then he has to get reined in by directors to uh, varying degrees. Oh, so you're saying he's like, he? if it was up to Nick, he would have been full throttle weird. And yeah, John T's like, think hey, he's this is a movie for Wyoming. Be. Yeah. I think he always wants to be full throttle weird. Um, but I don't know. I don't I don't know the man. Um, I don't even know the other guy. I don't know what I'm talking about. Yeah. This is a bad episode. <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about at any point. Um anyway, uh I think that Nick Cage I don't think he likes being reserved yeah unless that's part of the bit um i I recently watched willie's wonderland where he has no lines of dialogue he's very uh reserved 
is not doing a lot of crazy um, head motions. Yeah. Um, he's not making facial expressions. Really, like, that movie could have starred anyone. Uh, but because it's Nick Cage, it becomes, like, this meta-commentary. Was it supposed uh, to be meta-commentary? Or, like, was that the plan I don't, from the start? Or did it just does it just end up being that way? And it's sort of I a think dead, it a, ends up being that situation? Way. I think it's inspired casting to do that. Yeah. Um, whether it's intentional or not, that's my, uh, that's my take on Willie's Wonderland in case you're curious. Uh, yeah, I think that he only wants to do weird and interesting stuff. Um, and I don't think he's very good at either choosing roles or, um, knowing what's going to be a good movie. Yeah. Maybe he just likes being in movies. He just loves being in movies, dude. And that's respectable. Um, he could say the same about Robert De Niro. He also just loves being in movies. He's He's got kids to pay for. <laughs> I'm quite sure he has enough money, dude. He's been in, he was in The Godfather. I part, mean, part three, maybe. He's in two. Hell yeah, dude. The worst yeah. one. No. Shut up. <laughs> you don't know what you're talking about. Um, <laughs> but yeah, no, once, once I feel like the wind of this movie gets kind of taken out once they get the, uh, they get the declaration, man. Yeah. It's way too easy to steal that. Yeah, they did really gloss over. Like he's got this surveillance van. He hacked into the cameras at the the whatever building. Um, and they just like conveniently have this this gala, um, where he gets Doctor Chase's fingerprints for some reason. I don't remember. Yeah, because he needs he needs them to. There, there's like kind of like a back and forth bit where it shows that you know Nick Cage is clever and you know is using subterfuge to get into the into the the room where they're keeping the the preservation room i don't know what it was called yeah. um yeah but you know he and he and he's you know as considerate as one can be when they're stealing a historical document um whereas seen bean mm-hmm. he's he's just breaking shit you know he's knocking down doors he doesn't give a fuck uh which probably is more efficient and it's in if it wasn't for the fact that I mean, Nick Cage is there, it would have worked, which is insane. Yeah, famously, all he does is just like wear a leather jacket and have two guys with guns at his side at all times, and he is doing everything exactly the same as Nick Cage. <laughs> <laughs> and he's just like slight. Like I like that he's he only doesn't a know bit any dumber. history. Or he just he doesn't have a historical like he doesn't have a history like, as a he's special interest. He's allegedly, yeah, he's allegedly very smart, but like he doesn't use it. He's like, oh, well, no, he, figured, independent he figured some stuff out. He just it, you know he's like, I don't know what this means, but I'll, I can use Google and yeah. then figure out where to go next. He's kind of well, no, actually, one of his henchmen uses Google. Well, he, but he probably tells them what to Google. Top his results. Head- that's the best part of the movie when that guy says top results. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> no. Okay. Folks at home, check out the scene where uh, Sean Bean's henchman says top results. Um, that's my little autistic echolalia moment. Um, that's, that's great. Yeah. Uh, that's the best part of the movie, and I'm not joking. Since, since this came out, I... I've enjoyed that part of the movie more than anything else. Uh, yeah, just like going around with a gun or a guy with a gun more accurately. And just like, you just follow Nick Cage. You extort him a little bit. It's crazy that those guys were pulled, like all of, uh, all of the henchmen just had guns and were shooting in public and like, yeah, didn't just, just who fucking cares? <laughs> I mean, I guess it's Philadelphia, yeah. so like maybe they're just yeah. like, yeah, you know, business as usual. Yeah, they're like 
running on rooftops with guns and it's like jumping off buildings and it's like shooting gravestones and they're just like eh. going into like Trinity Church and defiling a grave like a priest. <laughs> and it's like, yeah, whatever. Yeah, they write all that shit off, like who cares? But then they're like, but we need to have the FBI involved because they would definitely yeah. be chasing Nick Cage. And it's like, you know. Yeah, I feel like they, I don't know. I'm a bit of two minds because if somebody stole the Declaration of Independence, I feel like that would be a big deal. Um, And they don't really make it one in this movie. They're like, we'll just put up a fucking dummy and then kind of just, you know. Yeah. We'll like just they casually got... whatever pursued at Cage. And, eh, it's yeah, they got... They got one guy just casually strolling up, hands in pockets, like, put your hands on the car, sir. Like, if you want. Yeah. It's only the Declaration it's, of Independence. It's We've very, of them. it's we very a team low that keeps key. That, but we just burn them. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's very low key. Like, nah, I don't know that you did the right thing here, Nicholas. It's just like so much of this movie feels like the uh, it exists just so that there's like action sequences. Yeah, I mean, the action sequences were, in my opinion, like the most whatever like tune out. Yeah, part of the movie, like the parts of the movie that are interesting are when they're like, you know, doing the history scavenger hunt, which is like admittedly contrived and stupid, but like, you know, it's like the heist part yeah. is fun. And they're like, you know, we need to go to this place and learn this his- history thing. And then there's this other little gas, like, you know, gadget thing that does this other thing. And then we go somewhere else. And that's fun. But I don't need, I don't need an action sequence. Yeah. I think this is kind of um, it's like weird slow mo shit. Like, I know it's 2004, but still. Yeah. It, it, this it, it is, aged uh, really poorly. This is what I, I've been talking about. I think that this, I'm just now realizing is kind of trying to fall into the hot people genre that um, Tomb Raider falls into, but like it's Nick Cage and John Voight and Sean Bean. Like, <laughs> I mean, you got Riley, <laughs> Riley, and you got um, Diane Kruger, who's a woman, um, a beautiful woman. All women are beautiful, but she's a beautiful woman. Uh, but she doesn't do any of the action. She holds no. on to a car door. Um, she carries around a, a tube. Yeah. Was it, it, was it her or Riley who just drop it into the middle? Like they just trip and fall for yeah, no reason. <laughs> she, she just ran the trips. Yeah. And then that was a big, um, that was a mainstay in a lot of films at the time. It was just like, what if they conveniently trip? Um, which is annoying. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think this is trying to fall into hot people as a genre and it's just, it doesn't work as that. And it doesn't work as an action movie. And like, they don't go into it as a heist movie. Um, so this really is just a vehicle for Nick Cage and they don't use him as effectively as they could. Ex- yeah, exactly. I agree. We are almost always in agreement. <laughs> We, we go into like everything we're like oh we're definitely gonna have some beef we're gonna disagree on this film and then we're both like yeah you know it was like <laughs> we have these very even-handed opinions or we're both critical about something in basically the same ways like i think the only time we've really diverged too much was was really with with chris n's work um yeah you know, and i would love like a, a a history version of chris n where he's on yeah he's on the the, he's an admin for the Facebook. I I just really fucking love history. You know that guy <laughs> would have made a good National Treasure movie with Nick Cage. That guy would have known how to put this all together, and he would have made it a mediocre action film, and like also this mediocre like love romantic plot, which like you do not believe for a second. Like you know the movie no. is telling you that there's, it's going to happen in the language of film, but and you there's don't, no reason for it. No, it's just they're both they both like history is really the only thing they have in common. And like Nick yeah. Cage's character is also now that I'm remembering and I'm awake. Um <laughs> 30 <laughs> minutes into the episode, I'm like, yeah. I'm ready to I'm ready to go. Um Nick We're Cage, starting over. 
he's like kind of sexist. <laughs> yeah. Like he's kind of, he's, he's like not nice to women or really anybody in the beginning of the movie. And then he just, is, I guess, so preoccupied with the height. I don't know. Like his personality, like the movie just is mechanically driven around the fact that it has to have these certain pieces filled in. And then they just kind of like wrote around it. Like it, it feels like a video game. Like they have all the levels and all the mechanics set out and then they write the plot after they did all the store, like all the, all the, you know, yeah. set pieces and the levels and all that. It's not, it's not good. <laughs> it's, I don't like yeah. it when video games are made that way and at least you get to play it. Yeah. Um, so I guess let's do the classic uh, bad boy cinema bit recast. Who, who, who are you recasting? Um, <laughs> I think uh, Benjamin Franklin Gates could be played by Jay Baruchel. <laughs> I don't know who that is. He's the skinny little twink that's friends with Seth Rogen. Oh, that guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. No, that would uh, be Riley, dude. No. Just yeah. Give, give my give my cast a, t- uh, a moment to cook. Yeah, Jay Baruchel as Benjamin Franklin Gates. Um scene bond you could probably cast um any british person <laughs> oh you know it would actually be sick now that you say that pierce brosnan oh that actually that would be so good actually <laughs> <laughs> um dr abigail chase uh i would say just like a no-name actress woman doesn't really yeah, matter. Doesn't, <laughs> she doesn't need to be in the movie. Just save a little bit of budget. Uh, <laughs> so you can spend uh, more of it on being on location at various historical locations. Yeah. Um, Riley cut him from the film. Um, Nick Cage's dad. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. It's just, old, you're making Nick Cage. You know, yeah. Nick Cage is now Nick Cage's dad. Nick Cage could do a lot of roles. I wish he did. You know, you know who I think Harvey uh, Keitel should be. Yeah, I I know it. Say it, Leo. I think Leo would be because you you give more of a focus on him, right? So you have these three clashing perspectives, and you don't waste all this time with the stupid love interest that nobody gives a shit about. Get rid of the action scenes, you know. And it's just yeah. three guys trying to outwit each other in, in the pursuit of the national treasure. I think that's a good movie. Yeah, sure. Also, I, I still think you could keep Nick Cage as Nick Cage, though, too. Like that him, yeah, his character could. being him is not the the issue. Yeah, he's the and I don't think Leo, I don't honor. think Neo could be or I don't think Leo could be uh, Benjamin Franklin Gates. I don't think yeah. he'd be a good fit for that. And that's, yeah, I, I, I I'm not usually don't. one to say that Leo couldn't do a role, but. Yeah, I don't think he, like, he would be probably too reserved. You need you need a guy to be kind of a freak. And I don't yeah. think Leo could authentically convince me he likes history <laughs> or, like, is autistic. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah. Leo DiCaprio as a person is just. Um, He's too much of an empty shell as a human being, I think. To no, I think he's a. He, he's I feel like he's like a deeply stuff. troubled person. <laughs> like I think he's a sad and lonely person, as far, yeah. you know, like deep down. And so I think he does well in those roles where you just need him to be like a little sad. Yeah, but like still charming and still fun. Whereas like there's there's no poor little meow meow. I never once am like damn nick cage is literally me i don't think i've felt like that it may be any nick cage movie ever yeah and you need you need guys like that i think brad pitt's another example where i'm just like there he's not me and that's (laughs) fine yeah you're more of a, a leo dicaprio a ryan gosling yeah i'm seeing i'm seeing the new ryan gosling uh picture this evening although by the time this is posted it'll be old news yeah that movie will be old enough to vote by the time this comes out um yeah i think that's my cast is jay baruchel uh pierce brosnan 
Um, I'd like Jonah Hill be Nick Cage. You know? Jonah, Jonah Hill could honestly be Nick Cage. If it's not, if it's no longer, uh, and like current Jonah Hill, who's like weird, yeah, with like the blonde hair. I don't know if he still has that, but like weird, yeah. Post does that big Jonah Hill. Yeah, like you people, Jonah Hill. <laughs> yeah. Jonah Hill, when he did the documentary that's about his therapist, you know what I mean? Like, uh, that Jonah Hill would be a great Nick Cage in this, yeah. in this picture. I wish I could do a Jonah Hill impression. Yeah. Like the, the Miranda as no. Nick Cage. It's now a musical. As as Riley, maybe. <laughs> okay. We bring Riley back, but it's Lin Manuel Miranda, and he just shows up to like do like one musical number and then Pierce Brosnan just kills him. <laughs> just mid <laughs> mid singing. And you and you're like, oh, they're they, like or maybe you just bring back Riley, like the same same actor. Yeah. Untouched. You know, like, you know what would actually be some inspired casting. Um Instead of Harvey Keitel, Michael Sarah. <laughs> we got to get Michael Sarah into more of like a, a serious, authoritative role. You give him like a little mustache or something. Yeah. Oh, Can you, you grow a beard. Youth. Yeah, you got to watch Youth and Revolt, where um, uh, Youth and Revolt is like Hitch. If um, <laughs> if Michael Sarah was both characters. If Michael Sarah was both characters and schizophrenic, uh, <laughs> okay. Ethan Revolt is great. Um, and his alter ego has a mustache. <laughs> that's really, that's pretty funny. Folks, don't rewatch. Everyone, everyone listening has seen National Treasure. Nobody has not seen National Treasure. Don't watch it again. Watch Youth and Revolt, dude. That's I my, feel like we might upset some people by being kind of mean, not mean, but just kind of dismissive of National Treasure because it's like not good. Yeah, it's like um, it is maybe a two, like two and a half, maybe three, but it does not get a like for me <laughs> at this point. You know, maybe when I watched it in two thousand four, sure. Yeah, I definitely. If, if I was alive, I definitely I, on ice. Yeah, on ice. Uh, I definitely have liked this movie. At times in my life, yeah, um, I liked it when I was, you know, eleven. Yeah, I don't know that um, I've ever felt as hot on it as most people seem to. So a lot of people, like the, people just like the culture of the meme. Yeah, you know? and a lot like, of people I'm participating this in this culture, like a, and that's all they care about. And they're idiots. Oh, a lot of people point to this as one of Nick Cage's like biggest roles, not biggest, but like best. That's so, um, that's so stupid. Yeah, and I think when Con Air a, exists, come on, it's a bit of a meme, and there's definitely a world where because in Nick Cage's filmography, this is just kind of mixed in with garbage. Yeah, um, like because he has some garbage movies, but like people point oh, to this one as one of the not garbage movies, and I'm like, no, this one's like just adjacent to the trash heap, but it's still like whatever. He has good movies. Yeah, I don't know that this was meant to be a good movie. Like based on <laughs> based, based on, on our was, friend um, <laughs> John charge, John yeah. T. Based on John T. Now to. Um, to back up my my opinion that it's real who's who of what's that it's the wyoming of movies uh disney's the kid with bruce willis you guys remember that one you guys remember disney's the kid you guys remember cool runnings that uh jamaican bobsled team uh, you guys remember um the meg you guys know the meg with what's the big last shark. vegas what the fuck is this it has yeah. Robert De Niro, it Robert has De Niro, De Niro is in it. <laughs> it's I apparently De Niro good. loves doing. Oh films. no, it's not. <laughs> it's got Michael Douglas, Robert De Niro, Morgan Freeman, Kevin Klein, and Mary Steenburgen. And I, I don't know anyone on God's green earth that has seen this movie. <laughs> um, shout out Mary Steenburgen, actually. 
We got we got to do a Mary Steenbergen vehicle. She she actually kind of rips. Um. Yeah. So um, that's that's what I mean for the folks at home that his uh, filmography is Wyoming. You remember it because it's uh, so forgettable. Like national again, National Treasure is probably. I mean, I, mean I, I can't say personally if it's the best movie on his filmography, but it's the most memorable uh, for yeah, sure. That's object. That's like an objective true. fact, which is crazy because it's such a like. If they didn't have the trailer saying "I'm going to steal the Declaration of Independence," no one would have watched this. It would have. It would have been. Well, that's not true. People would have watched it and been like, "That was fun," and it wouldn't have had the cultural like hooks. You know, yeah. Because I'd rather uh, rewatch Mister and Mrs. Smith than this. And Mister and Mrs. Smith was a whatever movie. Yeah, but you know what, Mister and Mrs. Smith did do that successfully pull off hot people as a genre of film. Um, I'm looking at the the chronology of Nick Cage's filmography um, now. You got Adaptation, 2002. Very well-respected, up-there film, right? Mm -hmm. Won some awards, I'm pretty sure. Charlie Kaufman. Um, You got Matchstick Men, well-respected film. You got this. You got Lord of War. You got The Weatherman. You're kind of bordering on trash. Yeah. I I like Lord of War and The Weatherman, actually. Folks at home... Don't watch Taxi Driver. Watch The Weatherman. It's the same movie. Um, I don't know. It's kind of mixed in with trash, but you give him you give him a little time to to cook. Uh, the Wicker Man, Ghost Rider, Grindhouse. These are good. Uh, and then you get into real trash, like Next, National Treasure Two, Bangkok Dangerous, G Force. Well, we, National Treasure Two is allegedly better than the first one yeah I and it has sold it. it did way better like 130 yeah. million budget mm-hmm. which is probably off that 30 million is probably just going to nick right to nick and but it made 450 yeah nine for almost 460 in the in the box oh, that's crazy people turned up for national yeah. treasure too um, they should have a national treasure world in kingdom hearts like four it's made by yeah. Disney. They could do it. Now it that happens. I think the national treasure level in Kingdom Hearts would be a better media experience because they get rid of the love interest. They get rid of Riley because Sora is going to be Riley, right? Sora yeah. and Donald and Goofy, they're all Riley and they're, they're actually likable. Riley fucking sucks. And it's just like, if those three are like bantering with Nick Cage and just going to set pieces. Yeah. And, it, and the video game plot of the movie is now just a, a video game level. That's a that fucking rocks. All right, <laughs> Man, they they should do that. That rules. Uh, I don't know who's in charge of Kingdom Hearts. Miyamoto, Miyamoto, get on <laughs> no, it. No, that's uh, that's Tetsuya Nomura who's in charge of Kingdom Hearts. All right, that's I don't fair. Know, whichever whatever suit at Disney lets them pick the movies that they do. Um, um, yeah. Anyway, the point being um nick cage does a lot of like anything he's offered movies particularly yeah particularly around this era of his career honestly dude it's like Uh, it's it's the 2010s where he's just doing yeah fucking whatever what like what are you doing g-force for nick it, honestly, you know, I'll go as far as to say is that after the second National Treasure movie, he is just lit- he's doing anything. Yeah, it's all it is all like there's there's some okay stuff mixed in, but like for the most part, it's just like yeah, it's because whatever. he's Nick Cage, he gets offered good movies every once in a while, but like you don't need to do the Crudes. You don't need to do Joe where you play the Joe. Crudes is probably one of the better. Um, yeah, I made a shitload of money. So, like, that was probably one of his yeah. better choices. He did not need to do Joe. He didn't, he didn't need to do the Crudes. Yeah, he made some money. Is the Crudes? Did he um, do Pay the Ghost in 2015? Yeah. 
They don't even they don't even have a box office <laughs> amount. <laughs> uh, yeah, there's a lot of things that he did not need to do. And look, credit where it's due. Nick Cage is kind of back to doing good films. He's still doing a little bit of trash, I think. Um, the ratio of good stuff being mixed in is marginally higher. Yeah, and that he's it done is a being lot of in. films in 2023. That was what six, right? Yeah, that's crazy. I guess they're yeah. probably all filmed during COVID, and he was just like, "Let's yeah, bang these out." And then oh, he was in the Flash. That's funny. I forgot about that. Yeah, I mean that doesn't really count. That's like he didn't do that one really. Yeah, that was like test footage from 30 years ago. Um, but apparently Renfield is very good. Dream scenario is apparently good. Michael Sarah, folks, pay attention to Michael Sarah. He's about to have a renaissance. I don't know. I might have um, might have lost it on this episode. <laughs> no, that's good. Um... Okay, you got you got a lot. Watch Prisoner of the Ghost Land. You know me. That's a, that's just, a movie. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to watch it personally. No, we should watch it for this. If if you want, if you want to, if we want to talk about a movie where we could get into some stuff, we should watch that. All right, let me look it up. And we're we're looking it up, folks. It made eighty thousand dollars in the box office. <laughs> yeah, we're not gonna watch this, unfortunately. No, we're definitely watching it, man. No, I don't think we will. Uh, folks, email us badboycinemafanmail at gmail dot com. Let us know if we should watch that, or if we should watch um, Dream Scenario, mm-hmm. or. Con Air. I mean, we should just watch Con Air, I feel like. Yeah, I feel like we should do Con Air. I've never seen it. Um, We could do Face Off. Nick Nick Cage Month, coming soon. I mean, we keep saying we're doing these months. We could just do a bunch of Nick Cage movies. It doesn't need to be confined to uh, the Gregorian calendar. Yeah, but I think the audiences respond better to when they're told you know, this is Nick Cage month, and they can go, okay, now I'm, I know what to expect because they're they're mindless idiots, and they're just gonna they're just gonna eat that slop. They're gonna eat that podcast slop up. That's you listening yeah. right now. How do you idiots? Feel? Idiots. You idiots. make something. You know, what are you fucking consuming? What are you, right? yeah. Why are you listening Contribute. to this? Contribute. Make something. Your parents are not proud of you. They're not. No. Oh, they. Why? Well, I, I want my my precious young child to grow up to listen to bad boy cinema, watching the fucking National Treasure. They clicked on this because they were like, "Oh, I remember National Treasure for when I was 10. And then now you're fucking watching. You're listening to this. Get get a grip. It's embarrassing, honestly. Go go tell one of your uh, one of your grown ups. Uh, you know, we got to be inclusive of, of orphans out there. I'm sure we got a big orphan and, contingent. And the kinds the of grown ups, you know, there's, there's yeah. more than just mom and dads. Yeah, uh, go tell one of your grown ups that you you're listening to the, the National Treasure episode of Bad Boy Cinema. Report back in our email yeah. inbox how that went. Tell us, you know? uh, tell us how soon after they sent you a, a link to a job application. Um, anyway, if they this didn't, is a, you should call Child Protective Services. <laughs> Absolutely, even if you're like 30, just, just something for fun. Something's not right with your the relationship you have with your grown ups. Um, <laughs> <laughs> if I told my grown ups that I was I was doing this podcast, oh boy! <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Anyway, uh, don't watch National Treasure. You've seen it. Yeah, you, we fine. know you've seen it. We've all seen it's it. Fine. You watch the trailer. The trailer where he says that he's going to steal the Declaration of Independence. 
that's a better memory for you than actually watching the movie again. Yeah, watch Youth in Revolt, folks. I would love to do it for this show. We watch probably a movie never by will. Any other director. Yeah. Watch. Um, let me see if I can pull. Watch Willy Wonka in the Chocolate Factory again. Re-listen to that episode. Yeah. Uh, that's a that's a movie with something you know going on behind the eyes, that's, right? That's another that's another movie that everybody has seen, but also is way better. Which is like, because we there's no pretty... gags, there's no cutaway gags in <laughs> National Treasure. <laughs> yeah. It's uh, this movie could have been a lot better um, if they tried. Look, National Treasure one. Could it have been an email? No, but it could have been a short film. I'll say that. It could have been like a a long episode of TV. Yeah, it could be like a season finale of something where they they put on like an extra thirty minutes. A little mini series where they just focus on each episode centered around like a different chain in the in the in the treasure hunt. Which yeah, I assume is probably what the Disney show is. If I yeah. were, that's probably exactly how that's structured. Uh, like, apparently, that's bad. So what? If, what do I fucking know? Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, watch a Jay Baruchel movie, folks. Just learn to appreciate a little Canadian cinema from time to time. Watch um, Trotsky. It's a Jay Baruchel classic. You ever see Trotsky? Uh, no. One time I went to the cinema and somebody approached me and asked for my uh, personal contact information. And they said they were going to send me a ticket to watch Trotsky for free. And they're like, it stars Jay Baruchel. Pretty cool, right? And uh, I'm amazed that pitch worked on anybody. <laughs> Nobody knows who Jay Bear, like particularly at this time, nobody knows who Jay Baruchel is. It's like 2008. I've seen one movie that he's been in, I think. Knocked up. No. This is the end. Yes. Hell yeah, dude. Um, yeah. Shout out Jay Baruchel, dude. Uh, all right, that's the episode. Do you have any? Uh, do you want to recommend a movie for the audience to watch? No. A specific, I, okay. Yeah. All right, folks. Um, your parents are not proud of you. I'm not proud of you. You don't need to listen to this show, but you're going to because you're addicted, you little freaking babies, dude. Uh, all right. See you next week. <laughs> <laughs>